I was initiated uh, into Satanism by my mother, who was also initiated by her mother. It was just like a, a generational case coming from the other generation until it reached my generation. Yeah, but um, God had, was merciful when I gave my life to Jesus. You know, I didn't expect uh, <laughs> uh, God to forgive me, but uh, God had to forgive me. How did this initiation happen? My mother uh, wanted to have some money. So what she did was uh, she consulted her mom and her mom was already in witchcraft, was a, a member of the voodoo group. So what happened was uh, the mother to my mother, my, meaning my grandma, told my mother to say, you know, if you want to have money, I will show you the way to get it. So she was taken to, to be initiated in Western Indies, where there is the headquarter for voodoo incarn incarnation. So that's why she was initiated and she was told, not, she was given some uh, principles and laws to follow. You know, she was told that she should not have any child and she should, she should not get married. So now when she got married, I was born. She came to Zambia, she got married to a certain man, which is my father, and I was born. Now, when I was born, they wanted me to die, and she was told to divorce my father. Now, it was not possible for me to die at that time because I was just a baby. You know the pain that mothers go through. So she said, no, I'll not kill my child, but I'll accept to divorce my husband. That's how she divorced my daddy, and we went together in Namibia. Well, she's a Namibian, so went together in Namibia, and there in Namibia, that's when she decided to give me to the devil, to give me to the kingdom of darkness, to Satanism, where she belonged, so that she may be having a lot of money. Yeah, so that's how I was initiated when I was just a baby. Because I was young the time I was initiated, so I didn't know that I was initiated. Now, when I became seven years old, I started experiencing strange things. I suffered the rejection. Uh, when every time when I go to school, no one, no one loved me. And um, one strange thing also that surprised me a lot was that uh, every time when going to school, my mother could give me a cup of blood. You know, I knew that it was blood, but uh, I, I don't know what was stopping me from asking her a question. So why are you giving me blood? It's like I was already possessed, so I was just getting everything that she was giving me. So when I started going to school, I started experiencing a lot of difficulties and strange things. In the sense that I even reached an extent of stopping going to school because it was too much for me. That's when I got, went to my mother and I told her, I said, Mom, I, I, I don't know what is happening in my life. No one loves me at school, even the teachers. And a lot of things have been happening against my life. So tell me what is happening. She told me one thing. She said, you know, you don't belong to this world. You belong to another world. Now, by that time I was young, I was, I think, seven years old. So I couldn't understand all those things until she got the Bible. Then she quoted a scripture in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 12, where God was telling Abraham to go to the place that he had prepared. So after I read the after she laid that scripture, you know, I was convicted because I thought it was coming from the Bible, from the Word of God, you know, but I realized that the devil twists scriptures, yes, so that's why it's very important for us as Christians also to, to study the Word, because the devil knows the Word, that's why I, I know that when he was um, tempting Jesus, he was also saying it is written, meaning that he knows what is written. So he's twist, he twisted the scripture, and by the twisting of the scriptures, that's how I was deceived, and I found myself into the trap. How did you actively then start becoming an agent of darkness? Yes, after um, my mother twisted that scripture, she taught me to say all what she had came from the kingdom of darkness, came from Satanism. So, you know, and I was very young, you know, every time I'm going to school, there was that mentality where you admire wealthy, you say, ah, I think I want to be like my mom, I think I want to be rich, I want to be what, but I didn't know where my mother was getting her riches from. So I started admiring and she said, you know, for me to have all these riches, I, what, what I did was um, um, I killed people, I sacrificed blood to the devil. I did what, you know, and um, she told me to say the devil is a good person. The reason why they hate him is because he's so good. When you're good, you never be loved. That's what she was telling me. 
So at that time, at that moment, I started believing in the devil, you know, and she showed me the way of initiation. She said, tonight you're going to sleep. As you sleep, uh, somebody will come and collect you. Now, I didn't know how I was going to be corrected. So I just slept and uh, I heard some strange noise outside. I thought we were attacked by the thieves. So I tried to peep through the window, but I couldn't see anybody. So I switched off the light and I slept. And I heard a voice telling me to say, woke up, the time has come to go to the place. At that time, I was about uh, eight, seven years old. It was happening the same year. What happened was something like astral projection, you know, something to do with the soul traveling. You know, I, yeah. So it's like my soul came out and I found myself in a strange place where I was give, being interviewed and given conditions, made covenants and everything. Yeah, then from that time, I was given the gown, a black gown and a knife to say, you'll be using the knife for sacrifice. So now I woke up, so I thought it was a dream. Yeah, so I said, Mom, I had a dream tonight. Then she said, no, no, that was not a dream. It's the place that I taught you about. So that's where you went. Then I said, but I don't have the knife which they gave me and the gown. Then she told me, so no, those things are in my bedroom. So we went to her bedroom and I saw them live. I said, things that I saw in my dream, I've seen them. Then she said, yes, the place where you went, that's where I belong. So all these things are here, you know. And from that time, she said, teaching me how to kill. You know, it was very sad because I didn't start killing spiritually. I started killing physically, you know, whereby... Uh, my mother could do, send some men to go and capture some people, those who are moving at night, get some people, take them inside the house. She could use the knife live, not spiritually, you know, operate the person who gets the heart. You know, she goes and sells it uh, in Durban, in the sea, where they use to catch the, 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 what? the, the sharks, because they believe that there are some minerals inside the shark. So they put the heart of a human being on the on the wall. So that's how we said, and, and, and when she kills, we could drink the blood together. And from that time now, I started killing on my own, you know. So that's what happened, and I, I said the advancing, and I could become more and more ev wicked. At what point did you become a voodoo incarnate? After I was initiated, the first thing that I was told was that my daddy had died because I'd never seen my daddy from the time I was born. So I was told that my daddy was dead, and um, when I was told to give a sacrifice in the devil's kingdom, I believed that we are the two of us with my mom, we are staying the two of us. So I asked my mom, I told her, I said, you know, I've been told to, to give a sacrifice. Then she told me, she said, you know what? Your father is alive. Your father is in Zambia. So don't sacrifice me, go and sacrifice your father. I'll give you the address and everything. So that's how I moved from Namibia to Zambia. Now when I came to Zambia, I found my father, he's, of course, he's still alive. I found him and I was told to sacrifice him. Now when I came to my father's place, I discovered that my father was a man who had the heart for the children. He loved me so much, you know, and uh, I was wow. told to kill him. And I failed to kill him because of the love that he showed ah. me. That's awesome. So, and um, I discovered that she was married again to another woman who was my stepmother. So my stepmother was the one who hated me so much. She used to mistreat me, she used to push me, you know, do a lot of things. So from that time, I asked them, they said, no. I asked them to say, I cannot kill my father. Then they, they said, you know, choose. It's either you die or your father dies. You know, so it was a challenge for me, which I could uh, not over easily overcome. But uh, I thank God because, you know, God has a plan for everyone. You know, the Bible says he knew me before I was formed in my mother's womb. You know, so even what the devil planned did not work against my father. I was sick myself and they wanted to sacrifice me. They wanted to kill me. Until finally they said uh, they, they wanted me to sacrifice my mother, my stepmother. So now, because of, of the way she hated me, I found, as, I found it to be a way to kill her so that uh, that hatred may go, you know. But uh, I was not happy. That's how I was taught to say, get a knife. I got the knife and the miller, and they said, call her name. 
then I called her name. Then surprisingly, I saw her appearing on the mirror. Then they said, strike the, 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 the knife to, uh, towards the mirror. You know, so I struck the knife because I was scared. I said, I'm going to break the mirror. They said, no, no, it's not going to break. So the moment I struck it, it passed through the mirror and I saw blood on the mirror. So me, I didn't know what had happened. So the time I woke up, I discovered that there was the people were crying. You know, they were weeping. So I asked them, I said, why are you weeping? They said, your stepmother is dead. So I said, oh, so that thing that I did, my stepmother has died. You know, so that's how she died. Yeah, and um, from there they said, since you have killed your stepmother now, we are, you are going to be reinitiated. You are going to take the path of initiation. Now the path of initiation is very difficult to take. You know, it's a, it's a do or die situation. You know, whereby I believe for me to be saved in that path of initiation took the grace of God. You know, that's why I have seen the love of God. Because we were a lot of us at that time, but a lot of people died. You know, we, we were about uh, 500 and only 200 remained. You know, among those who remained, I was there. I was there remained. Yeah. So from there, that, that was the group that was taken now to, to be trained as the Voodoo Incarnates. Yes. So we are trained as the Voodoo Incarnates to how to, to hear the voice of the demons, how to speak to the demons how to destroy churches, how to case people, how to do every kind of evil, how to kill, you know, full time controlled by the evil spirits, full time controlled by the devil himself. That's what it means to be able to incarnate, to be fully controlled by the evil forces. Were you given a territory physically or uh, leadership or control of people who you sent to do things or how, how did that how did you exert your authority in the demonic as a voodoo incarnate? All right. Um, when I was chosen to become a voodoo incarnate, I went through some trainings. Uh, we were training how to kill, we were trained how to sacrifice. The, they call those things the light way of sacrifice, the light way, meaning that they believe that there is a long way of sacrifice. They say that Christianity, the way they do it in Christianity, it's a long way of sacrifice. But them, they have got the light way of sacrifice, but which is uh, not true according to the Bible. So what happened was um, I went through some trainings and uh, I was trained how to cure and all those things. Now after that, they said that uh, to graduate as a Voodoo Incarnate, you should sacrifice at least 80 people. You know, and it was not easy to sacrifice 80 people. So I used to move from hospital to hospital. You know, because when you become a Voodoo Incarnate, you are given power by the devil to change into anything. You know, I can steal somebody's face and become like, uh, do some sort of impersonating, you know go into the hospital, I still, I become like a doctor, you know, then I get the in syringe and I start passing from bed to bed, injecting people, they are dying, I inject, this one dies, I inject. So at the end of the day, you find that two, uh, 30, 30 people could die at the same time in the hospital. And the doctors could, couldn't even understand why these people have died. Because when you ask them, they say, no, the doctor came here, he, attended to us, it attended to this person but died. Not knowing that the doctor who came was not the real doctor, was the fake doctor, a voodoo incarnate. You know, because they are everywhere, they are in hospitals, they are everywhere in churches. Yeah. Apart from that, again, we, we used to do a lot of things like uh, causing accidents, you know, using the forces of darkness. You know, just cast a spell upon the driver, then he just sees the blackout, then from there he doesn't see the Lord, then the vehicle turns, then they die just like that. So I was told to kill um, 80 people, you know, for me now to, to graduate as a full-time voodoo incarnate. And when I sacrificed those 80 people, I was give, I was chosen to become the junior assistant grandmaster for Eastern, Central and Southern region. Yeah, that is Eastern, Central and Southern Africa. Yeah, that's the region that I was assisting, meaning that there was a senior grandmaster and there was a junior a grandmaster. I was just an assistant at that time. How old were you when you became a junior grandmaster? Yeah, when I became a junior grandmaster, I was about uh, 18 years old. Yes, I was about 18 years old. Because it was a process for me to do all those things. 
you know, I passed through different places, I went through what hell is and everything. You know, but one thing that I found was that uh, only God is true, is the true God. Yes. You know, because uh, sometimes when you look at all the things that I used to do, you know, I used to do those things because uh, I was full time possessed by the evil spirit. You know, I was possessed by the evil spirit. And um, yeah, I started doing all those things. I became a junior grandmaster at the age of 18. Though they refused to give me anything, they gave me the house and uh, the vehicle and everything when I became 20. You told me once that you actually, even would enter into Christian churches and uh, prophesy, do things in churches. The strength of the church is determined by the presence of God. So it's not all the churches that we could manage to enter into. Yeah. So we used to enter into the churches, and some churches when we see that uh, they have stayed for too long without doing anything, nothing is changing. You know, we used to even to buy the churches and put our own pastors who are possessed you know, and form their own doctrines, you know, whereby they manipulate the minds of the people and confuse people. But at, at the end, everyone is confused. Yeah, being, being a junior assistant grandmaster for Eastern, Central and Southern region, I was given something that I was supposed to do. Though uh, I was supposed to be in all these places, but uh, there were people who were juniors who were ascending, because at one time before I became a, gra a junior grandmaster, I was also an initiate. You know, when I what it means by an initiate is a person who is just initiated. You know, and when you become an initiate in the devil's kingdom, you are assigned to do things on behalf of others. You know, meaning that there were people who were senior than me, and they were sending me, and I used to do things on their behalf. If they are told to sacrifice, they could send me go and sacrifice for us. And we go there. If they are told to go and attack a church, they could send me go and attack the church for me. You know, I could go. Yeah. But when I became a junior assistant grandmaster, I was stopped from moving from place to place doing assignments. You know, I was given uh, um, only those strong assignments. But if some people have failed, if those junior satanists have failed, then they were coming to us to say okay you now go with your group then i could go with my group if we fail then we are referring the case again to those who are senior than us and if they fail they were referring to those who are senior than them just like that and so they have got representatives everywhere you know everywhere you go you find the agents of the devil they are everywhere so this system of authority within satanism that does that even uh enter into europe and like north america uh, wickedness is everywhere, you know, and um, when you look at North America, that's why you find there is a church, there's even the Church of Satan, which has been registered to the government in Colorado Springs. You know, this church was started in 1966 by Anton Lave, you know, and they have got their symbol, a goat head. And uh, they believe in the pentagram, and they believe in the ion. The ion is uh, the created. Ion means the created God. You know, them they don't believe that it's God who created the universe. They believe that the universe created God. And uh, because the Bible says Satan was the bright morning star, that's why they use the pentagram as a star to worship the devil. You know, so those are the symbols. Now that church is there in uh, in, in the United States. It's not in the spirit, it's in the physical, you know. And when you look at Mexico also, there is a, a school of witchcraft called Adaten, okay? Adaten uh, School of Witchcraft. You know, I have got a, big, a, a bit of some pictures of that school in my, in, in my laptop. I have got the pictures and, uh, and all the lessons that they take there and the way they advertise it, you know. So you find that wickedness is everywhere. You go to United States, you find the school of witchcraft there. There is Hogwarts school of witchcraft. You go to England, there is a weaker school of witchcraft. You go to Mexico, there is the Adaten school of witchcraft. You know, you come to Africa, we have got schools of witchcraft. Would you even say that there is real Satanism 
real Satanism in Norway? The Satanists are everywhere. The agents of the devil are everywhere. Where there is uh, Satan, there are a lot of things that happen there. You know, the kingdom of Satan, this time it's being exposed. But when you look at even here in Africa, there were a time where we didn't believe in, which, in Satanism. You know, it, it was looking as if it was part of tradition. You know, Satan today is using many ways of destroying people. And one bad thing about Satan, he will never appear to a human being and say, I'm Satan. You know, Satan is looking for people whom he can use. You know, Satan cannot come to you in his nature and deceive you. you see? He is looking for a body which he can use so that it may come to you and do it and deceive you. And you see? That's why today we are finding uh, deceivers and whatsoever. Yeah. Especially when I say, if, if we look at the term Satanism, what it means. Satanism is not just killing people. A Satanist is a person who worships Satan. A follower of Satan, like Christianity means a follow, a Christianity means Christ-like, meaning a follower of Christ, a person who is like Christ. So Satanism also means a person who is like Satan. Now, how can a person be like Satan? A person can be like Satan when he begins to do things that Satan does. Have you seen? Telling lies. The Bible says, all those who do all the, what who tell lies, they have got their father who the devil. Now, if your father is the devil, you are also the devil. Yeah. Have you seen? If your father is Satan, you are also Satan. Yeah. You know, because you cannot be a, 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 a Satan. Your father cannot be Satan and you become someone else. You know, you take the nature of the what? The title of your father. So now, Satanism is a, a, a Satanist is a person who is a follower of Satan. Now, there are many people who represent Satan in many ways. Some people, they represent him in gossiping. Some people, they have chosen to be serial killers. They kill people. Some people, telling lies. You know, some people, uh, destroying marriages. Some people, adultery. So, a lot of sins that are happening. You know, all those sins, when you look at those things, sins, if a person finds himself doing that, okay, he is a person, he is representing Satan. He is helping Satan to do his assignment. Yeah. Have you now, when we talk of advanced Satanism or voodoo incarnate being, it's somewhere whereby you become full time. You say, Me, I think telling lies is not enough for me. Stealing is not enough for me. Killing, killing using a, a, a poison is not enough for me. I think I need to advance and start doing more and more. I need to know Satan. In fact, you stop believing in God and start believing in in Satan himself, yes. So you find that, or wherever you find these things, Satanism is there. People have sold their souls. There is a website, you know. I think I'll, I cannot explain it like as like now, but there is a website for demons. And when you open that website, there are people who have sold themselves. Pictures of those people are there. They have sold themselves. Some people. When they, because there is a, 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 a what, something like an application form where you apply, you know, they say souls for sale. You apply, you sell your soul. So they will ask you to say, what is your favorite sin? Some people have said, a, a, what, a, watching pornographic movies, some people hatred, some people uh, insulting, some people indulgence, a lot of things. You see? And they are being paid monthly for selling their souls. And they are being monitored by the, by, by, by the agents of Satan, making sure that they are doing what they have promised. That is Satanism also. At what point did you start longing for Jesus Christ? What the devil does when he wants to lock you up, he gives you something which will please you, so that your focus moves from your Creator and goes to the creation. And he said, so now he gave me a vehicle, he gave me a house, he gave me money. Now, my focus was on what I had. 
So there are a lot of Christians who are coming to preach the gospel at my home where I'm staying. They were saying, no, receive Jesus, you know. Now, because of what my mother told me, I didn't want to believe because I thought as if I was going to disobey my mother. So I refused. I said, I cannot receive Jesus. Several times people came and said, I cannot receive Jesus. Until finally, uh, I was asleep and I had a vision. And in that vision is that uh, there was somebody who entered into the, the room where I was sleeping. Then he, he switched on the light. Then he told me to say, look at yourself. I looked at myself. I saw chains all over my body. Then I, I asked him, I said, are you the one who has bound me like this? <laughs> then he said, no, I am not the one who has bound you. You have bound yourself. Yeah. Then I said, what do you mean that I have bound myself? <laughs> you know? Then he said, uh, you have bound yourself. Then I asked him, I said, you know, because I believed in magic. I believed in witchcraft. I believed in satanism. I believed in satan. I didn't believe in God. So I thought that person was a great magician. So I said to I said, who are you? Who has got the power to bind me, the junior grandmaster? Then he said, I have not, I'm not the one who bound you, but I'll tell you who I am. I'm the Alpha and the Omega. And he disappeared. <laughs> now, at that time, I didn't know who was the Alpha and the Omega. Yeah. You know, and uh, I'd never had the time to research about the Alpha and the Omega. So I forgot about that. I went, I went, into, I went with my friends, we bought some beer and we said drinking. You know, so that we may forget about what happened. Then, from that time, you know, uh, from that time, the following day, I was sent to go and destroy a meeting where a lot of people, ministers, preachers, pastors, uh, ministers of the government were, were attending the meeting. So I went there, I was told to go and destroy it. So the moment I entered into that, you know, a lot of things happened. I had my laptop and I was busy typing and I had a phone I was communicating to the agents of the devil somewhere telling them what was happening, the arrangement and their program and no one knew that I was an agent of the devil so I had a folder so now next to me there was seated a pastor so as I was, I was listening I said shivering because of the presence of God now the, my folder to fall down, slide then the oh. papers were scattered now, I'd been, I was trained in, at Wicker School of Witchcraft in England. I had a diploma. And I was also trained in the United States at um, Hogwarts in, in a School of Witchcraft. I was also trained at, at the Church of Saturn. I served there as... Um, in Colorado Springs. Yes. I was also trained there as, um, as um, um, a, 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 um, um, somebody to save the priests, you know. The, the, we find the priest, you find the what, you know, we, I was uh, like an altar agent, you know, when they want to sacrifice somebody, we could go there, prepare the altar, preparing the temple, how people are going to enter, you know, how, how the arrangement, sitting arrangement, I was there, you know, as just a servant. So, what happened was, uh, after I came in that meeting, all those papers were scattered. Even the degree that I got at Voodoo School of Witchcraft, it was also scattered. So now the pastor was seated next to me. He got those papers and he said, let me help you with these papers. Let me help you. So as he was speaking, picking the papers, he saw the degree for Voodoo Incarnation hmm. Witchcraft. Then he was moved and he went in front and told the pastors, this person who is seated next to me is not a pastor. I found this with him. Me, I refused. I said, you know, I'm a pastor. You know, and I tried to cheat. I said, you know, I was praying for somebody for deliver and so I grabbed this. Now, I didn't know that my registration card was down there. So the pastor picked the card and the same name that was on my reg, that was the name that was on my, on the what? On the, on the, on the degrees and certificates. That's how I was called. So they were busy now struggling, getting papers, bring them here. So I told them, I said, oh, give me my papers, I'll tell you what happened. The moment they gave me my papers, they were waiting for me to start speaking. And from that time, I prayed, I started invoking the demons, and I disappeared. Now when I disappeared, they knew my name, and it came out in the newspaper. That there was a person who disappeared uh, at the meeting, and his name is Mlenga Kavira. 
you know and now the the papers were everywhere in Zambia so now the police came in and they said this person has been killing people let us look for him so the police came and they said you wanting for me they were chasing me chasing me with guns and they couldn't manage because the Bible says it is not by might nor by power we are not wrestling against flesh and blood but against principalities so they thought as if I was operating using the flesh but I was operating using the supernatural powers so sometimes when they want to shoot me, the bullet couldn't come out. The trigger was fading to be pulled. You know? So a lot of things happened. They moved papers, spread it everywhere on the radio. They were saying, you know, I became the most wanted in Zambia. They were wanting me, my posters were there in police, officer, in police stations to say, when you find this person, we are going to give you such kind of an amount. He has killed a lot of people, he has done this. Until finally I was caught. I was taken to the prison, and after I was put in the prison, they locked me there, you know, and I, because I was a voodoo incarnate, I was given powers to change into anything, so I changed into a snake, and I passed through the grill door, and early in the morning, they went there, they didn't find anyone in the police station. They said, where is the person? Just like that. And I said, now for killing the police, doing what? Doing every kind of thing, until they surrendered me to the church. The church now in Zambia started praying for me. When the church started praying, that's why I saw power, the power in prayer. There is power in prayer. You know, it's only that when we are praying, we don't know what happens. You know, especially that uh, when Christians are praying, there is something that takes place in the supernatural. You know, all those prayers that you, you, we have been praying, all those prayers that Christians are praying, they are not just coming as they started praying for me, I started losing certain things out of myself. <laughs> it's like deliverance I said happening when they started praying for me. You know, from nowhere I started uh, longing for Jesus. I said, uh, let me go and find out more about this Jesus. Yeah. You know, I said moving from place to place, going to the church. You know, I understood that it's not every church where they understand the, the power of God. Some churches, they were, they were chasing me. They were saying, God cannot forgive you. Some churches, they were telling me bad things. Some churches, they were saying a lot of things. But when the time came, when I found myself, I was driving, I was going somewhere, and uh, I became very thirsty. I said, let me go and get some water. You know, I was frustrated, though, you know, some, a lot of people were praying for me, but some people were against me because of what I did, you know, because of my past. But some people were praying for me. Yes. That's why, uh, uh, this is, that's why God, I think God has also called me to pray for people who are in such, yes. uh, in the kingdom of darkness. And from the time I was born again, I've seen a lot of people being saved. You know, after they prayed for me, I became very thirsty and I went to a shop I said I wanted to buy some water I said let me get some water the moment I entered into that shop the thirst was gone then I heard a voice telling me to say learn away now because I was sensitive to the evil spirit I thought it was the devil speaking to me so I started learning for my life I didn't know where I was going then I heard some people speaking in a church then I entered into that church. I said, let me pretend and sit here as if I've come to attend the service. I didn't know that it was a training center for pastors. They told me to say, what are you looking for? I explained to them. I said, oh, I've come to attend church. Then they said, no, it's not a church service. You can go outside. So the moment I moved outside, as I wanted to go outside, I was paralyzed. I fell down and I said, vomiting blood. So they came and they, they started asking me, why are you vomiting blood? Are you sick? And then I said, I'm sick. They prayed for me, they prayed for me, they prayed. The demons manifested and a lot of things started happening. Then they asked me, they said, you know, as we are praying for you, the demons were saying, you were in, you are, you are Mlenga Kavi, the person they have been looking for in, in, in the government. I said, yes, I'm the one. Then they said, so you have come to kill us? I said, I've not come to kill you. I think you have seen the power of God. It's, it's time now I need to give my life to Jesus. <laughs> you know, I believe that Jesus is Lord. So I said, telling them, I said, I want to confess to you 
I want to give my life to Jesus. They said, are you sure? Then I said, yes, I'm sure. And by that time, I had 21 million kwacha in my bag. You know, and 21 million kwacha, it's about, uh, I don't know, about 10,000 or 2,000, uh, two to 3,000 US dollars. So I told them, I said, this is the money that I have to show you that I truly need Jesus. I'm going to give you this money. It is coming from the devil's kingdom. You burn it and destroy it to show you that I'm serious. Whatsoever you shall tell me to do, I shall do. I need Jesus. They led me to Christ. You know, from the time they led me to Christ, the moment I accepted Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior, you know, or I, you know, I didn't know how he entered. Whether he used my mouth, whether he used my nose, whether he used my ears, I don't know how he entered. <laughs> you know, it was very tremendous because I don't know how he entered, but what I remember that time was that my life changed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't remember how he entered, but what I remember was that from that moment, my life changed. My life changed. You know, I had the thirsty for human blood, the thirsty one left me. I had the, uh, the, the desire to kill people, the desire left. I had the desire to make more money by shedding blood. That desire left me. I gave my life. And I taught the people to say, whatsoever. I taught God, I said, God, whatsoever it shall take, it shall take me. That's how I gave my life to Christ. And things changed. And people now said, they want him for me. We are going to kill him. Because they didn't know that I was born again. So, so a group of Christians took me to the northern part of Zambia, where I was staying, in the village. So that I may be kept there for a moment. I may be refreshed. I went there with the pastor. Now the pastor who took me there, he didn't understand the spiritual things. So they were attacking me and the pastor. You know, it's like from the kingdom of darkness. They said sending spells, sending whatsoever to attack both of us, me and the pastor. So when me and the pastor were attacked, the pastor became scared. He rejected me. He told people to say I was still I was a bad person. You know, I was almost rejected by everyone. Everyone rejected me. You know, I suffered rejection. You know, I didn't understand why I was suffering rejection. You know, one thing I understand about rejection is that when God wants to do something into your life, He will always take some people away from you. So that when He does it into your life, the people will not say it's because of us. That's why he's like this. People will say we rejected him, but God did it for him. You know, and I believe that there was a purpose why the, that pastor rejected me. He's a good man of God. I love him so much. But he didn't know also why he rejected me. He rejected me so that God may select me. I said going for prayer and fasting. After I came from prayer and fasting, as I was coming, it was I was weak. So I got on the bicycle, I was riding, and I was hit by the vehicle. You know, I was almost half dead, you know. And if it was somebody would have said, God has rejected me, how has he allowed me to, to, to be in this situation? But I believe he allowed that situation for a purpose. Yes. Because a situation, the way I understand it, is a setup for a revelation. When God wants to give you a revelation, he will, he will create a situation. So he created that situation whereby I was hit by the view. According to the doctor, he said my right leg had a crack, my right bone had a crack from my right leg. And he said I was not going to walk again. And he said my collarbone also had a problem. And he also said that uh, my lungs had problems. So from there I was taken to the hospital and I was put in coma. Now I was in the coma. At 16 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the evening, I became conscious. Then I started praying. I remembered what God said, building the order of prayer. I asked God, I said, Father, is it your will for me to be in hospital? And God told me to say, it is not my will. That's what God told me. Then I discovered that it was not my, the will of God. I had bandages all over my body. I started untying those bandages. I threw them and I said, walking. I didn't know that the doctor said I was not going to walk. <laughs> 
So what I did was, as I was walking, the doctor saw me walking and he thought it was, it was a ghost. He ran away. I went to the wards where the patients were. I wanted to explain to the nurses. The nurses ran away. Even some patients ran away from the, the ward. So from there, I asked myself, am I dead or am I alive? You know, I was confused. I went back into the ward. Then the doctor came back. He said, are you Gideon? I said, yes, I'm Gideon. Why have you walked? I said, God told me to some healed. And I was instantly healed. The same day, God healed me because he loved me. And that was the time that I saw that God loved me. He, he, that situation that he created to allow me be in an accident, I had the revelation that God is the healer. <laughs> so I was healed. Oh, God. And after I was healed, I left the hospital. And the person who hit, hit me with the bicycle, because the bicycle that I had was beyond, it was, it, it was destroyed, it was beyond repair. So from there, I went home. Now when the people went to the hospital, they didn't find me. Now because they didn't find me there, they spreaded the rumor that Gideon is dead. So everyone in Northern Province knew that Gideon is dead, not knowing that I was alive. And when the pastor heard, the one who rejected me heard that I was dead, he went on the radio station and he said preaching to say how many times are you going to hide? Gideon is dead. We are not happy that he's dead. But there are some people who are hiding in the kingdom of God. The man of God thought I was, I was hiding and the people gave their lives to Jesus after he preached that message. You know? He didn't know that I was home. I was also listening to that message. So from there I came. I went to the station the following day. I said I want to preach also. And they were shocked on the radio station. They said, ah, Yesterday, somebody came and said, we are dead and I want to preach. I said, yes. What are you going to talk about? I said, I want to talk about why looking for the living among the dead. Yeah. And I told them, I said, I'm not going to die, but live and declare the words of the Lord. People in the occult world, they, are, they, they know the power that is there in Christianity. They know the power that is there in Christianity. They know how powerful Jesus is. Because... Uh, one thing that made me to be, to, to, be, to be saved, what made me to follow Christianity, is because there are certain things that I didn't understand in the occult world, which I understood when I became a Christian. Now, at that time, you know, there were a time whereby we could be assigned to say, go and destroy this pastor. Go and destroy the intercessors, because the intercessors are the pillars of the church. Yes. The strength of the church is determined by the, the intercessors, how strong the intercessors are in that church. So there were times whereby we were told to say, go and destroy the, the intercessors. Now, th there was something that shocked me a lot. And uh, this is that uh, when we went to some church, we could not see people were praying, but we could hear voices. Now, I didn't understand why we were not seeing Christians, we were only hearing voices. But when you ask them to say, were well, you there in the church, they could accept to say, we are there in the church. You know, I believe David said, uh, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. You know, when you are in the presence of the Almighty God, the Almighty God hides you. He protects you. One thing about Christians, they are protected. And another thing, you know, is that uh, I was failing to understand because uh, I said the understanding when I was born again. You know, a Christian is a supernatural being. A Christian is not a natural being. Christians are supernatural. There was one time when, when I was sent to, to go and destroy this man of God. You know, every time when I go to this man of God's place, I could find him praying. Every time finding praying, every time I could find him praying, every time praying. Now, I gave up, I said, you know, every time that man of God does not sleep, because when he starts at 19 hours, he finishes right at 0 4 in the morning. So I didn't know what was going on. And uh, what happened was, uh, they said I was foolish, according to the devil's plans and the agents, those who are senior than me. They said I was foolish and they sent somebody who was advanced than me. So he went there. And he found the man reading the Bible and accompanied him. Now when he, he left, he, 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 he was at that place, he found the man reading the Bible. So he said, I'm going to destroy him. 
the moment the man finished reading the Bible, he knelt down and said, pray. So we are waiting for the man to finish praying. The man couldn't finish. Then my friend tempered and he said, let me enter into the house. The moment he entered, he, he, he entered into the door, I don't know what happened. He just screamed and that's how he was caught. He became saved. He became born again. He was distracted by the power of God. And he was saved. Now, me, I didn't understand why the man was not sleeping. I went to, we sent, they sent some agents to find out from the man. They asked him, so why don't you sleep? The man refused. He said, you know, me, I sleep, I sleep around 8 o'clock. Now, who do you find who prays at night? Now, as I sat down, I was doing some studies. Then I discovered that the spirit of a Christian does not sleep. When the body is asleep, the spirit remains interceding for the body. So when the devil comes, he's in the spirit. He will not see the body, you see your spirit. And he said, now you'll be waiting for your spirit to sleep, and your spirit will never sleep. That was something extraordinary about the Christians. And I discovered that the spirit of a Christian does not sleep. That's why when you are asleep, your, bo your, your spirit remains interceding for you. Your spirit remains praying. So when the devil comes, he does not see your body because he's in the spirit. Because the Bible says what is born of the spirit gives birth to the spirit. Meaning that who, the person who is in the spirit, he sees the things that are in the spirit. So now, when the agents of the devil are operating, they move in the spirit. Now, as they are moving in the spirit, when they find a Christian, they don't see the body of the Christian. They see the spirit of the Christian. Now, the spirit of the Christian is very strong because that's where God stays. You know, some people are, are very anxious to join Satanism. People are looking for Satanism because they want to have money, because they want to, to, be, to, to make names. And, you know, one thing about Satanism is that... Uh, it's very risky. It's the kingdom of death. That's the way I can put it. You know, the devil does not give you things free of charge. I saw people who were selling their sons and daughters. You know, the Bible says in the book of Second Kings 1717 that the practiced divination and suicide. They sacrificed their sons and daughters in the fire and sought themselves to do evil, provoking God to anger. Have you seen? So meaning that this witchcraft and satanism we're talking about, it's not just the things that we speak, things that just exist on earth. It's something that is also there in the Bible. It's written. It was practiced in the Bible and God was against those people who were doing those things. People were invoking the spirits of the dead. They were satanists. People were speaking, uh, 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 who were uh, invoking the spirits of the media, the necromancers, the, the, the astrologers, all those things. They are, they, were, they are all the categories of satanism. You know? And you know, I saw people who were sacrificing their sons and daughters. People were submitting the names of their family members to the order of Satan. People today are killing anyhow. You know, we don't know why they are dying. People are, are living in poverty. We don't know why they are living in poverty. Because there are some people behind those problems. People are behind those problems. Yeah. Witches are everywhere. That's why it's the time for Christians to arise and shine. Amen. To begin to pray. To begin to destroy. Paul was saying, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers, spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. That's the battle that we are fighting. That's why Christians need to arise and shine, to begin to pray like never before. You know, we cannot scare the devil uh, by the way we sing. The devil is scared by the life of Jesus in us. Amen. Because Jesus lives in us. 
The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became fresh, and made this dwelling among us. Then the Bible says, Jesus said, I am, in John uh, uh, 15, verses 1, that I am the vine, and you are the branches. Now, when you are watering the vine, the same water that passes through the vine is the same water that passes through the, the, the branches. So meaning that the same life that passes through Jesus is the same life that moves through us. It's the same life that the Christians have. Yes. The same anointing that moves through Jesus is the same anointing that moves through the Christian. That's what Jesus was saying. You can do greater things than what I've done. There are a lot of things to be done in this world. There are a lot of things to be destroyed. There are a lot of things to, 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 to be destroyed. There are many people who don't believe in God. Some people, they come to church, but they are not Christians. Coming to church does not qualify me to become a Christian. What qualifies me to become a Christian is the relationship that me, that, that I have with, with God. So what the devil fears is the relationship that we have with God. That's when you look at the sons of Sceva, they took a person who was possessed with demons. They prayed for him. They said, in the name of, Paul, of Jesus whom Paul preaches, yeah, yeah. we command you to get out. Now what did the demons do? They said, Paul, we know him, yeah. and Jesus, we know. In short, the demons have got the wrist of those who are Christians and those who are not, who are not Christians. So the moment when you are chasing them, you are saying, devil, I come against you, the first thing that devil does, he goes to the chat to see whether your name is appearing on those who are Christian. That's why the demon said, Paul, we know, because Paul is here on this list. And Jesus, we're talking about, is here on this list. But who are you? Your relationship with Jesus Christ is your identity in Christianity. The devil is scared of our relationship with so this time I'm not scared of witches, I'm not scared of satanists, I'm not scared of any evil, because I know who I am before Christ Jesus. I am a child of God, I am born again, not born of flesh and blood, but born of water and born of the Spirit. Amen. Yes. And, and what used to happen is that we used to attack the flesh. You know, most of the people who are attacked by satanists and witches, they are those who move in the flesh. Because they believe that the life of a human being is in the what? In the blood. Now, when you become born again, your life is not in the blood. Your life is transferred from the blood to the spirit. So, when the devil comes and injects you with the spirit of poverty, that spirit of poverty moves in your blood. Sickness, when they give you poison, poison moves where? In the blood. So as poison begins to move in the blood, it will never find life in your blood to kill. So as a result, you just be moving in the blood, it will never find any life. Because your life is not in the blood, your life is in the spirit. And you see, so the life of a Christian is not in the blood, the life of a Christian is in the spirit. That's why Jesus said, you shall take dead to the poison and it will never harm you. Because dead poison moves in the blood. So when poison begins to move in the blood, it will never find the life in your blood. Because your life is hiding in the spirit. So when you are born of the spirit, you become a spiritual being. Yes. That's what I was admiring. That's why this time uh, I'm not scared of anything because I know that uh, my spirit cannot Amen. be touched by the devil. The spirit of the Christian cannot yes. be touched by the devil. Amen. It's like a phone. Okay? When you call it, when the devil uh, 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 dows your, your, your body, it, your body will answer. But when it is trying to contact your spirit, your spirit is outside coverage. <laughs> the devil has got no contact to your spirit. Amen. He only has contact to your body. You see. That's why uh, Paul was saying the carnal mind cannot descend the things of the spirit. Meaning somebody who depends upon the flesh, you know, will not descend the things of the spirit. Meaning that uh, the devil, when he wants to destroy you, he comes for your flesh. He does not come for your spirit because your spirit comes from God. Your spirit belongs to God. It's the temple of God. That's why he cannot even possess your spirit. Wow. 